Today I'm installing tortoise point motors and wiring on the points that lead on into my staging yard. How hard is that going to be? Okay, so the track is all secure. This is obviously the underneath of the board. All the wires coming up uh, with the frogs and the track feeds. So I can now install my tortoise point motors. And this should be quite easy. I've got these pads here with the holes pre-drilled. So all I have to do is to pop it there and then put some screws, one, two, three, four. Try and line this up correctly. There we go. And I then have to take this, this thin piece of uh, wire. Uh, I've got to bend it a little bit into the right shape. The instructions show you how to do that. And it then runs from this uh, armature here, which moves from side to side through this fulcrum point, through the hole in the baseboard and through the uh, hole in the uh, that drives the point um, and it can then be trimmed from the other side. So I'll just put that together and then I'll show you how I got on. Um, I've now secured all five of these point motors and I've attached See there, the, uh, the linkage that goes down to the point through this fulcrum, through the hole, through the hole in the point. Um, if I turn this the other way up, you'll be able to see. There we go. Um, you can see each of the points has uh, has this thing sticking up through through it. Um, there's some good uh, reasonable tension on these, so if I, if I manually pull it out, it springs back quite nicely. Um, but you can uh, you can adjust the tension by moving the fulcrum up and down. So I'm pretty pleased with that. I'll show you again uh, the underside. You can see here I've got some some heat shrink just to tidy the wiring up. Um, and the next stage is going to be uh, soldering the wiring onto the point motor. Um, so the way these work. Um, there's two solder tabs either side that drive the actual motor. And then the other six tabs are in fact two single pole double throw um, switches. So I can use one of those to control the polarity of the frog. And there's another one I can use for other things um, if necessary. I can use those for controlling signals or whatever. So I think I'll get on and... Uh, do that soldering um, but uh, the big thing I need to do next is to wire up a DCC accessory controller to control all these points you'll see here I've got the feeds coming from the track um, red and black going to the two rails and there's a green one here which comes from the frog uh, and that's the case for each of these points um, I've put the cables inside a piece of shrink wrap um, just to hold it all together. Um, this one in particular needs to be kept out of the way of the, uh, the mechanism. So around the back here, you can't see on this one, but uh, with the mechanism here, we need to keep that f uh, free of anything. Um, and then I've been soldering them onto the uh, connection tabs. Now there's six, uh, sorry, there's eight tabs, the two on the outside uh, uh, for the motor in the, in the point motor. And then the other six are two groups of three um, 
Now the ones in the middle are common and the two on the outside um, the common is switched between the, you know, the other two depending on the position of the, uh, the point motor. So what I'm going to do is uh, solder the, the green one, the frog, onto the common um, and then uh, feed from the other two rails um, to the other two. So when the point motor switches, when it's one way it connects the frog to one of the rails and when it's the other way it connects the frog to the other rail. So first thing I need to do is just to trim off these, uh, these wires, get them the same length. And I've lost my uh, wire clipper now. Go and find that. There we go, so me it was underneath the board. All right. So there we go, that's about the right length. Um, trying to keep my wires nice and tidy. can then strip them off. Now obviously there's several different ways of doing this. Well, there's two different ways of doing it. Um, it used to be an order that you uh, attach the, the black and the red to. The green one obviously needs to go in the middle. That's the frog going to the common. Um, what you can do is set the position of the uh, the point motor and then using a multimeter such as I have here you can test the continuity between uh, these tabs so it's current position that was not connected. Yeah, nothing's working for me today. And that one is. Um, now, that position of the uh, the, the point motor um, moves uh, the bar this way. Which I believe connects to turning around the inside. Let's look at that. There we go. It connects the the frog to the inside rail. So therefore, the, the one that's connected, which is which is this uh, this one here, needs to be red. So my order is going to be green, black, red. Um, and in fact, that one's worked out quite nicely. All of them. The same. Even this one, which is turned around the other way, um, and that's something I've had to do uh, in order to have enough space. Um, be a bit careful laying out your points, work out where your point motors are going to go, um, and I don't want this one knocking into this one. So let me just try and feed. Uh, Feed this into place. Got my soldering iron here. It's nice and hot already. Um, so part of the problem here is that I'm trying to do this the wrong way around so you can see it. So that seems secure. I'll have a look at that and see uh, how, it, how well it's done the minute and tidy up if I need to. So that's all nicely done. Uh, those are all soldered on. Now the next step is uh, I need to connect some power. Um, and I can do that. Well, I mean, luckily I do have these red and black wires coming from the, the rails. Um, so really I need to attach the power to there. Um, so perhaps I can take a dropper um, off these tabs and that can go to my red and black bus wires. Um, 
So that's something I'll look into doing next. You'll see I soldered on another red and black um, to this red and black tab. Bit of a horrible soldering job there. Um, but I can now attach, these are effectively my, my droppers because um, they go to that tab and then uh, and then down uh, through these wires to uh, to the track. So uh, I can use uh, my um, uh, my suitcase connectors to attach these to a uh, a bus. Now I've also uh, just attached these uh, this yellow and blue cable. Yellow and blue is going to run off to the accessory decoder. So this, these are the cables that are going to actually drive the point motor. Now this is a Cobalt AD8FX um, and it is essentially eight, um, eight sets of the same thing. Um, you'll see here, one, two, three, four, but each of these got two sides. So one of those can drive a point motor. I did get a bit of confusion. Um, there's also an ADS 8FX, um, and that's the one you want if you've got solenoid um, point motors that sort of go tunk tunk. You need an instantaneous burst of, of, uh, of power. Uh, whereas these tortoises, you need a continuous um, small amount of power and it uh, they take a few seconds to turn the points over so you don't need a, you don't need a big capacitor uh, to boom give it lots of power so these things are they're quite swanky they can do lots of stuff um, but essentially you you attach your DCC here um, you can take that off the track if you like, or you can have a separate uh, separate uh, accessory bus, which I think is what I'm going to do. So it gives me a bit more flexibility with the wiring. Um, and then two of these, I can't remember which ones, two of them then go off to the um, to each of the, the point motors. And that's it, it's as simple as that. Um, each one of them's got a switch. You can see there's a switch there. You flip the switch in order to program uh, the ID of the um, accessory decoder. Uh, and then switch it back to run. So that's nice and simple. Um, now there's other connectors here. Um, you can use them um, for various things, you can use them to drive um, lights on a control panel to show you which way the points are set. Um, you can connect buttons from a control panel so you can manually change the way the, uh, the points are set. Um, and there's also a, there's another line that gives you a, a 5 volt logical uh, signal that you can then send back to computers or electronics or whatever um, if you want that sort of feedback um, so it's quite flexible you can do loads of stuff um, I'm not going to do loads of stuff I just want to get my point motors going um, so I think I'm going to pop this possibly about there on the uh, on the board um, and luckily I've got it, it's a drive eight um, points I've got seven on this board so that'll work out quite nicely and give me one spare as well um, so all I have to do is run the accessory the accessory bus to there um, I have to run these these red and blue lines to each one of these 
to find a way of organizing that so it doesn't look too terrible. And, uh, and that should do me nicely. So I'm going to get on and give that a go. Um, I'll wire up one of them and then attach it to uh, the DCC bus and see if I can get the uh, point to throw. Very exciting, the postman's bin. So, you have one of these, three way point. Actually, I haven't just got one of these, I've got loads of these. But never mind that, we'll talk about that later. Um, but this is good uh, because it means I can put this final piece of point work onto this board. And that'll allow me then to do the electrics on the back and then move on. Um, so, uh, so the only thing I have to do is to link it up. Um, that's pretty much in position, uh, this uh, piece of point work. Um, where is it? No, it's not. Let me change that. That's pretty much in position, just there. Um, so that's good. And obviously I need a piece of track linking to it. Now this is quite a tight curve. It's not quite minimum radius, but it's still pretty tight. Um, so I've got this length of track that I've cut. And you can see there it's not sitting perfectly, but obviously I'll be able to pin and glue it uh, with a bit more curve on it. But it is keeping some curve, which is good. Now to achieve that, and this is really tricky, um, because the problem with these, this flexible track is that when you curve it, you can't keep the curve all the way to the end and then you get a kink at the end where it wants to go straight. Um, I have removed with a pair of pliers each of the rails individually from the webbing and I have bent them by hand, each rail. And I've bent them around the track setter and then fed them back into the... Uh, back into the webbing um, and that sort of takes a bit of the edge off it being desperate to straighten itself out and will hopefully enable me to get this piece of track laid. So I think I'm going to give it a go now. Um, so we need insulated track joiners on the frog, a metal one on the edge there um, and then onto here. Uh, those two can be metal, I suppose. And hopefully, uh, that will allow me to then pin it down. I suppose I should probably put it down along with the point at the same time. Um, that would probably be sensible. Before I can do that, I need to deal with the frogs on these. Helpfully, there's two frogs. Um, there's one sort of here, and there's one here. And these don't work unless you wire up the frogs. Um, presumably that's because it's all a bit complicated around here. And so you can see, just in there, there is a cut in the rail just there. So I'll get that in focus. So you think. There we go. Just there, there's a cut in the uh, in the rail, and again, it's two cuts there. So the the frogs are automatically isolated, um, and therefore have to be separately powered. I believe there's another cut just there. It's a bit complicated this uh, three-way point, but anyway, the bottom line is uh, they come with frog wires already attached, which is very helpful. And all I have to do is wire those up to my switch motors and my point motors. I, obviously, I'm using tortoises. Uh, and you have two bars, one there, and one there. And I've marked, you can see where the point motors are going to go. 
back to back from each other. So that should cause no trouble whatsoever. I just need to drill a couple of holes to pop these wires through and then I can glue it down. So we've made more progress now. Um, I've fitted the, uh, the three-way point on the other side of this board and now attached these two tortoise point motors to it. Three-way point uh, has two switch bars, so you need two point motors in order to drive it. It's effectively two points just squashed up together. So I fitted these and just started doing the wiring. Had a bit of a challenge uh, here. You see uh, where the um, the bar goes down through the board. Now these point motors have a screw that you need to screw in to fix the uh, the bar. But because you need two point motors close together, they need to be facing each other in this way. And that means you can't get the screwdriver in to put the screws in. So one of these I had to put the screw in first before attaching it to the board. And I was a bit worried that was going to be difficult, but actually that worked out okay. Um, it's just getting the uh, getting that piece of wire through the hole and then through the hole in the switch blade in the point. And that works okay. Now over here, just coming out, uh, just coming out there. I've got there's these two frog wires. Um, the three-way point requires powered frogs. It doesn't work without powered frogs, so you, it comes quite helpfully with a wire already attached to the frog. It wouldn't hurt, to be honest, if all the points came with a pre-wired frog. Um, you could always just not use it. But there we go. This is this is good. So. Um, these two uh, these two wires are coming through from the powered frogs. I'm just attaching a green frog wire to it um, in order to do the wiring here on the terminals on the top. So I'll get that done and then I should be able to give this all a go. I've got them all wired up to the uh, DCC accessory decoder and that works quite nicely. So I thought Finally, I'd attach the track power. I need to attach it to both to the, the track feeds I've got here uh, for each point, but also for the, uh, 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 the switches that control the frogs. Uh, you'll see here, for example, there's a red and a black and then uh, input and then the green going to the frog. However, I thought I'd work this all out in my head, but when I came to have a look, I noticed that some of them have got the reds and the blacks in different ways round. I wonder whether that can be right or not. To be honest, I'm a bit confused. So I'm going to have to start all over again, work out which way these contacts work for a tortoise point motor, and then work out whether I've done it correctly. If I've got just one of these wrong way around, I believe the whole section will, be, will short out. It'll be a hell of a job to work out which one I've done the wrong way. I should have tested each one as I went. Well, that's another lesson that I've, I'll have learned for next time. So I've wired up, uh, or I've rigged up another tortoise point motor, so I can test uh, which way around the terminals work. You'll see here I've got the. Uh, uh, so I'm going to have to go and work that out on all of my uh, all of my point motors. So the entry to this fiddle yard is on a curve, um, and 
I'm using uh, I'm using the rule on this bit of track black to the back so that's the outside of the curve so that means on this side that's where my black rail is and on this side that's where my red rail is now having a look at each point motor if if it's in this position that moves the actual actuating rod uh, in the opposite direction in that direction and I believe uh, moving the switch blades towards the middle of the curve will therefore direct the points to move the train outwards so let me turn this over We look at this point, for example, where the switch blades are set uh, into the middle, which directs the train to the out curve, tra track on the outside of the curve. That means that the frog here is connected and needs to be connected to the rail on the inside, which is red. So. Turn this back over. So if the if the boater is set to the outside the actuator is set to the inside and that means that a frog needs to be connected to the inside rail. Therefore, on my frog, uh, um, I said that the connection here was always the one that's opposite to the direction of this. So if this uh, actuator is in this direction, then uh, the frog, that green frog will be connected to the connection in this direction, which is red. So that means that one's OK. We'll try this. Uh, look at this next one again. Uh, frog set to that direction, which means that this frog will be connected uh, to here, which is the other way around. So that one's the wrong way around. Again here, uh, the same. So I want the red on the inside. Now the big question here is what happens if I've turned the point mode around the other way? So here, the actuator is on the outside or the motors on the outside which directs the actuator to the inside which means the frog needs to be connected to the inside rail which is red here i can expect that green frog the switch connects uh, to the connection on the opposite direction to the uh, to the position of the point motor, which means it should be connected over here. So I believe that one's the wrong way around as well. So I finally got it all done. Uh, here I've got a whole row of suitcase connectors. I've got all these reds and blacks joined into the track bus. So nothing left to do now but test it. I've already checked for shorts. Uh, and that looks good so i'm hoping uh, i'm going to be able to drive my train around on this just before i wrap this up uh, there's something that's uh, uh, occurred to me um, uh, i'm going to do differently next time um, you'll see on each one i 
I've needed a, a red and a black to each uh, for each tortoise motor. Um, one is the inputs to power the frog, um, and the other, what is the other one? That's it. The other one is go, going to power the actual track, um, and I've got these these hideous solder jobs. You see here, I've got two blacks going going in. And, two reds, let me show you this on the other side, um, and I've just soldered uh, the extra wire onto the tabs, maybe that's okay, but uh, there's the potential for that going wrong. Um, what I've got here is a, I've got a tortoise point motor that's probably broken, um, it's a bit heavy with a screwdriver on it, um, but I've, I've, I've had a go at drilling an extra hole that will allow me to put two uh, two wires through and solder them on the other on the other side onto the tab. So I think for the rest of the tortoise motors I put in, I'm going to give that a go um, as part of my preparation. So this is another one of those moments. Um, I've uh, powered up the track. I'm giving it all a good test um, and all the points work they all move um, although uh, one of these uh, draw bars is a bit stiff and I realize that's because I put glue all along this length of cork and didn't leave a gap for the uh, for the draw bars so but I think it's operational I think it'll work does move but it's just a bit stiff but the real problem is this point uh, here no this point here and uh, when this point moves uh, the whole system shorts out uh, so I've had a little look into it and I believe the problem is right here Get in focus. There we go. Uh, you'll see right there on my frog, just there, I've put uh, a rail joiner and not an insulated rail joiner. So when I change this, uh, when I change this point over powered frog here shorts out against this powered red rail here which means this point is going to have to come up in order to change that rail joiner and uh, and that means I'm going to have to dismantle all the wiring underneath because the frog and the inside and outside rails are all wired up so another lesson learned the hard way i think i'm going to wrap things up for this video now i'm grateful to you for joining me uh, as i've uh, made mistake after mistake learned lesson after lesson uh, of putting uh, this bit of point work together i feel i'm nearly there i'm nearly there and i hope uh, you'll join me uh, next time 